tell you one thing I really do enjoy is the running animations of some of these mechs. Um, they're not quite organic, and what I mean by that is the, the footfall isn't a little bit on the center. Uh, but the running animations, I love the arm swing. I think arm swing could go even more. Um, obviously, this mech does not have any um, weapons on the arms. Hey, what's going on guys phil here and welcome back for another mechware 5 mercenaries playthrough where we left off last time was the very first mission of the campaign we're going to go ahead and jump in to the second mission imminent threat now first on your screen here we've got the javelin i have updated the default paint scheme of my i guess outfit my mercenaries outfit and of course one thing to note is you can't change the color of the dropship and or your logo on the dropship and or in other areas as well i figured this was sort of cut back maybe because it wasn't necessarily priority but we haven't seen if this is going to be added e either via pgi's effort and dlc which i suppose it would be i mean it seems like a sort of no-brainer i mean even um hbs uh, battletech had it uh, or maybe even mods, so I don't know, but hopefully we'll get an answer very, very soon on that. But let's go ahead and jump in here while this is repairing and check out the next mission. All right, so we have it. The mining company settlement is vulnerable to raider attack manner, so we've got to protect it. I'll drop you in a safe distance once on the ground. Head there and defend it. Should be a simple in and out mission, but no plane survives contact with the enemy, as the saying goes. So be prepared for whatever comes. Good luck. Now, of course, this is part of the tutorial missions that you'll have to do. And of course, technically, we could use the Centurion and uh, go ahead and do that for this particular mission. But I don't think... You know what? Let's go ahead and do this. Let's wait here. Let's go ahead and wait. Let's get the Centurion. Why not? Um, um, I, unless there's a tonnage restriction here, which there is. Okay, even though we waited, so it doesn't really matter. We can't use it anyway. Uh, we do have one point, and of course, I did explain the uh, reputation points on the first uh, video of this. So if you have not uh, uh, done that, make sure to check that out, and that is the uh, first mission. And uh, when we get a specific... Um, campaign mission i will be naming uh the video after the mission so you guys know that it's a campaign if it's in between if we're doing like a, a dem demolition or if we're doing a war zone or something like that i'll let you guys know but uh let's go ahead and hop in here and of course this is one of the very first missions so we're gonna go ahead and um go with the sea bills here now i did just play this on our live stream and if you guys would like to catch that live make sure to head over to our twitch channel twitch.tv forward slash NGNG TV. I'll have a link down below, but we're obviously going to be progressing on that every week and of course these videos as well. And depending on whether you guys would like, uh, we can pump out maybe two videos a week uh, instead of just the one right now. But as right now, I'm doing a video for MWO on Monday, a video for MechWarrior 5 on Wednesday, and then Battletech as well on Saturday. So if you like, if you guys would like to see more, maybe uh, Wednesday and Thursday or two videos, let me know and we can do adjacent videos. One thing you're probably going to notice here is I've talked about mods and specifically I've got a list of mods which I'm using down below. This is the rescale mod. Now, what Navid has also done in his latest update is updated the uh, drop screen. So now mechs aren't ridiculously small. It's a little bit more appropriate because you had a whole a heck of a lot of uh, headroom here. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and dive in here, shall we? All right, and of course, don't forget guys, you can't hit V at any time unless you've switched this. And of course, if you did, make sure to uh, change that up. But this is for your third person camera. And uh, let's go ahead and do this mission, shall we? So I have to get to the mining facility and defend it. Let's go ahead and check it is. There we go, it's on the map. We've got a icon as well. Dropship should be land... taken off, come on. Yeah, going. All right, this is a pretty straightforward mission. Um, there are some attributes that we'll get into that fill were sort of lackluster and I'll explain that when I get here, but I'll tell you one thing I really do enjoy is the running animations of some of these mechs. Um, they're not quite organic, and what I mean by that is the, the footfall isn't a little bit on the center. Uh, but the running animations, I love the arm swing. I think the arm swing could go even more. Um, obviously, this mech does not have any um, weapons on the arms. Overhead, Commander. Looks like the Raiders have already begun their attack. Get in there and protect those civilians. Looks like we're at 98%. I've never failed this mission, please but I guess us. that's possible. The Raiders are attacking our settlement. Oh, please. There are women and children here. No, not the children. Rihanna, you bastards. I think the Raiders are 
Raiders have set up some sort of jamming device nearby. What I'll kind of Raiders have jamming devices? Darn By the way, that's what you're observing in my HUD where the reticle is shaking. That's not your screen. Well, it is on your screen, but it's not it's not just you. It's not your eyesight. Ooh, hello. Target destroyed. All right, those two are dead. Let's go flip around here. And of course, them shooting your arms is ideal. These helos are coming inside of us. What kind of pilots are these? What in the world, bros? Again, two mediums, one full burn. Pops them both. I think some more vehicles will spawn here. Right, and this is one thing that's a lot different than uh, previous mech warriors, which is, yeah, it just randomly appears, start shooting, Target. is uh, you don't have radar and sensors like you normally think. You have line of sight, and that's if you have line of sight or if you're friendly. Oh my gosh, these tanks just literally spawned right here. That is fantastic. One of the drawbacks of this particular um, game and some of the, the this isn't even a um, a procedurally generated. This is actually hand uh, picked and hand painted, if you will, hand sculpted. Uh, this isn't like it just randomly generates here. Target destroyed. So let's get over here. I think there's another vehicle. Yeah, there's something else. So going back to radar and sensors, you you have to use your eyes. You can't you know rely on your tech to like oh something just is behind me. Nice work. These civilians are safe for the moment. Unfortunately, it appears the Raiders aren't done causing trouble just yet. You can see yet. that your HUD's getting crazier and crazier. And this is actually main processing facility on explaining what I was talking about before. And I'm just going to talk over. If you're interested about the story, just play the mission. But this is actually something that I, I really didn't understand why PG implemented. And this is another mechanic um, that you'll never see in the rest of the game. Uh, you talk to, They talked about, um, you know this some type of jamming mechanic or whatever um and this was actually worse in vanilla here you can see these elements are shaking in vanilla your entire hud did this and it was really uh one it was for me i don't have any visual or like issues of like motion sickness but it really made it uh really annoying and the thing about this is is like they set up this jamming array but i never really understood how it affects your reticle like if anything it should scramble your mini map right or if you go to try to lock on the targets, it's all fuzzy, yeah, right? Sensors are getting worse. Um, but if anything, it just it became cluttered. And it and to me, okay, that's the way you want to go. It was never implemented in another mission. You never see this again. They're teaching you a mechanic of saying, hey, here's this jamming device. Go blow it up so it stops that. And then it's never done. And again, I, I feel like this is something you'll often see in a lot of these playthroughs. Um, especially early on, these simple mechanics of, hey, and that's all we had to do, right? And and that's cool, but why introduce that mechanic at all if you are never going to use it? And I feel like that's, again, it's, it felt like there was a bigger idea here, a bigger design, and it never, it never, never did it. It never, never uh, got, got there. And we do have jump jets here, and we're supposed to go down there. I don't get waypoint that's cool but we're just gonna bypass that and go straight down here we do have jump jets we're gonna feather this the jump jets come back and feather this there we go destroy those radar units so there we go also too is there's no negative impact on missions as far as how much the facility is destroyed you could literally let this go down to one percent where the entire facility is pretty much non-usable right and there's no benefit there's no benefit on some of the missions it's like hey if you can get it before it's 60 percent destroyed there is some of them yes i will say but the majority of missions it's there's no context there's no it doesn't matter like if anything it sort of says you just take as minimal damage as you can. Target you know, on the facility, if it gets hit, it gets hit. It's really not that big of a deal. And I'm missing some shots here. And that's sort of a, you know, a recurring theme on some of these is like your your efficiency on these. There's really no huge incentive. There's no, you know, impact on life lost, right? Like at the very beginning, we had to protect those little, you know, buildings. If you run over them, it's not like someone's like, you know, like, hey, you're killing innocent civilians, you know, like, what the hell? Uh, there's none of that, right? It's just, oh, you, you know. 
thanks for helping us and thanks for saving us or whatever. Again, the story is very lackluster. Um, we did have one more vehicle over here. Um, there's no function or form, and I and I guess to some extent that's that's fine, uh, but it just sort of feels like your actions really don't have in the grand scheme of things any importance. Like, see, like, okay, well, I was gonna shoot through that, but we're at 70. It is what it is. Critical. You know. Um, we got VTOLs coming. We had another vehicle that was already over here. It didn't even trigger, so. Let's go ahead and see if we can get that. Heat critical. I watch that heat. Go. Go. Some VTOLs here. We're almost done with this mission. This is how easy and simple it is. Now, one thing I do keep in mind is for a newer player coming in here, this may not be simple. And you know, it's it's not overly complex. Right, but if you're not used to torso twisting like this game has, like most games, even first person shooters, don't have. Oops. Let's see, is this part of the wall? No, okay. I was like, most uh, first person shooters, um, actually, all of them really don't have trunk rotation, right? And that's a big VTOL, by the way. It's a Igor, it's got two AC 10s. What does that mean, Phil? It means it can mess you up. Let's go ahead and destroy this. And there we go. That's all we had to do. All right, you've reached reputation rank two. Your reputation across the inner sphere is growing. One thing I wish they would have explained a little bit there is like why that's important. I mean, rep is cool, but you know, is that what does that mean for you? Uh, we got a total payout here. Um, also, we had two shares. Like I said, what you want to do is you want to look at. I can pick up these two items here and sell for 250,000, or at least they're valued at 250,000, versus an AC-10, which is just 20. Um, I also don't own any, and I know I have one on my Centurion. So I'm actually gonna take that over that just for a backup weapon. Uh, we leveled up, skilled up, and these skills are actually, again, very important, even as you, the player, that obviously you have to aim, but being able to do more damage or, you know, being able to block more shots and stuff like that is always a benefit. We took a little bit of damage there, but total 315, total damage 2,600, 26,500. And again, here's, this is where I have the issue is they have this entire thing about this item, right? This, this uh, mobile jamming tower, right? This is the only time you see this. And again, I just feel like it was, it was like good, okay, if you're gonna do it. I just, I feel like how they implemented it, especially in vanilla, it was just very, it was very frustrating. Even as an experienced player, even as someone who's played games, it there was no reason around why they added it and then didn't like continue the use or thereof, but also the implementation, like sensors, not, you know, like, you should, it shouldn't have affected your reticle. I, I, again, I just don't really understand uh, that in the context of um, they didn't, uh, there's no other purpose for this. That's the only time you see this. All right, uh, let's go ahead and repair really quick. Of course, uh, go ahead and start that. We already uh, repaired the Centurion. So that was imminent threat, pretty simple, very straightforward. Um, but there were some confusing things. Uh, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Like, did you like that mechanic of the jam? How would you have changed it? Would you keep it? Would you alter it? Um, understanding that newer players coming into this game, if you're playing for the first time, uh, I, I understand keeping the, the mission simple enough to where you're not getting overloaded. And I feel like that, that mission, if you're a brand new, if you've never played MechWarrior and you've never torso twisted and stuff like that, it might be really confusing, right? And that that bar could get all the way down, and I and I feel like that's that's fine, like especially like these tutorial missions, right? Giving giving the player these easy sort of missions to introduce introduce them to uh, controlling your mech, to firing your weapons, and so forth and so on. But when you also introduced a uh, a jammer that would have really confused players, by the way, like. Um, why is that doing that at the very beginning? And then why is it getting worse? And then uh, it, to me, it was one of those like good initiative, bad judgment. And if anything, if they would have continued to use those throughout, like, hey, you need to, that'd be one thing. But I just felt like uh, 
that just wasn't the case. But uh, let me know what you guys think. Uh, of course, if you guys like this video, make sure to click that like button. Subscribe to the YouTube channel as well. That way you guys, guys get notifications if you click that little notification tab when we go live with new videos. But I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here. And on the next video, we'll continue on. And I believe that is uh, more context with speaking to Rihanna and taking the next mission and going from here. So like I say, again, thank you to everyone out there. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Uh, again, make sure to check us out on Twitch. And of course, if you'd like to support uh, what I do here, uh, check us out on Twitter. And of course, uh, Patreon, uh, consider uh, headed over and uh, joining a live Twitch stream. It really does mean the world. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Would you have changed this mission? If you are a new player, what did you think coming into this mission? I should just ask. I think that's the best way of doing it is if you came in here, was it, was it confusing? Was it uh, easy to pick up? Was it just downright just, uh, you know, pushed you away and you didn't really want to mess with that again? Uh, let me know. Anyways, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Until next time.